Good morning and welcome to Grace Note. My name is Marilyn and this morning we'll be reflecting on Psalm 43. Let us pray. Lord God, in frustration and discouragement, we turn to you. We need to know that you are near, protecting and rescuing us from the false things others are saying. We are sad to live in such a world where people have the power to make us think you have rejected us. We know this is not the truth. We know you have made us to belong to you. We know that we are safe with you. Send your light to our minds when others make us falter and cause us to waver. May we find refuge from the accusations and attacks in your presence. Fill our minds and our hearts with joy again. You are our Savior. May that hope sustain us through the trial of this world. Amen. Let's listen now to Psalm 43. Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Rescue me from deceitful and wicked men. You are God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Send forth your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then will I go to the altar of God, to God my joy and my delight. I will praise you with a harp, O God, my God. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. In Psalm 43, the psalmist speaks to us about being depressed or cast down. In verse 2, he speaks of mourning. In verse 5, he talks to his own soul to himself really and he asks himself why he's cast down and disquieted or why he's depressed and upset so the man writing this psalm is experiencing some sort of inner turmoil that's causing him to give up and quit in his life and there are all sorts of catalysts that can make people feel this way you might be feeling this way Maybe you're just physically exhausted and feel like you just can't go on. Maybe you're overwhelmed by any number of circumstances in your life and you feel depressed, cast down, upset emotionally. So a person can enter into this spiritual condition of depression for several reasons. But the psalmist actually tells us he's depressed throughout this psalm. He mentions an ungodly nation full of unjust or evil men in verse 1. In verse 2, he says that these men are his enemies and that they are oppressing him. And the question is, my mind is, who is this nation? And we're given minimal details about the identity of this ungodly nation. This ungodly nation is not a foreign entity. I think it's safe to assume that the psalmist is speaking about his own people, Israel. The psalmist is depressed because his own people, not some foreign entity, are oppressing him. They're deceitful and evil and oppressive. And we can identify with what that's like to live in a country marked by lying, evil, and oppression of those who love the Lord. So we know that the psalmist is depressed. We know he's depressed, so depressed. Enemies who are lying and oppressing and being generally wicked. But what's the solution to the psalmist's depression? In the psalmist's mind, what he needs at a very basic and fundational level for help with his depression is for God to act decisively. He says in verse 1 that he needs God to judge or vindicate him, as if he's being put on trial and needs to be exonerated, probably from these men who are lying about him. He needs God to please his cause against the whole nation, which is acting in a very ungodly manner in verse 1 still. 
the psalmist ends verse 1 by begging God for deliverance. So on one hand, the psalmist needs God to protect him from physically from his enemies. And that's not where it ends. The psalmist goes on to focus rather on his relationship to God in his word. In verse 3, he asks God to send out his light and truth. And he says that if God does this, then the psalmist will be led back to God's tabernacle in verses 3 and 4. And at this point, I think we can piece this episode into David's life. When he was being chased out of Israel by his son Absalom, he wants to come back to Jerusalem, to the tabernacle of God. But he needs God to take some action to make that happen. He needs to be defended from his enemies, but he also needs God to sustain him during that time in his brief exile with light and with truth. Negatively, he needs God to hold back his enemies. Positively, he needs God to encourage him by unleashing his truth in David's life. And when those things happen, it's only a matter of time until David is brought back to God's tabernacle. In verse 3. And then his thinking and mindset start to shift from his problems and his depression to the desirability of God. In verse 4, he starts to visualize being back at the altar of the tabernacle where he would offer sacrifices. And of course, those sacrifices in the Old Testament were usually animal sacrifices. And yet, That's not what David is limiting the scope of his sacrifice to in this psalm. In connection with the altar in verse 4, what does he say that he's going to do? He's going to praise God on the harp. Praise will be David's sacrifice to God when he's brought back to God's tabernacle in Jerusalem. And I think we know by experience that when we're really involved in praising God, It tends to drive away depression, the likes of which David was experiencing and working through in this psalm. So David will turn from his depression to instead praise, to praise this God who is the God of his strength in verse 2. He is the God who gives David exceeding joy in verse 4. And this strength-giving, joy-giving God is truly David's. He is my God, in verse 4. And so in light of these realities, and the fact that David's God is also ours, any of us who are depressed and cast down can ask ourselves with David, Soul, why are you depressed and cast down? Hope in God, for we will again praise this God who is the help and health of our countenance. Let's listen now to Lead Kindly Light.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of wisdom from the psalmist who fled to you in times of trouble and found to you his exceeding joy. Thank you that you are the joy of my salvation and the strength of my heart in whom is light and truth. Ignite in my heart a faith that holds fast to my hope in you and I pray that the trials I am facing today would be food upon which my trust in you will be fed. May I never forget that your grace is sufficient and made perfect in our weakness. Help me to fan into flame my faith in you, even when oppressed and discouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>